What's going on everybody? Welcome to another Such Art tutorial where we're going to be going over the concept of atmospheric perspective. So what is atmospheric perspective? Atmospheric perspective is the principle that objects that are in the background, uh, especially outside, are going to have more atmosphere between the viewer, which is going to be where we're uh, painting from, and the background. Therefore, objects in the background are going to be typically brighter, less saturated, and have less detail. Therefore, this tutorial doesn't really just apply to such art. I mean, it applies to any art that you do in general, especially outdoor, you know, outdoor scenes. But I'm going to show how I do it in such art. Now, of course, if you have any uh, different ways to do it or think uh, that I missed anything, leave a comment down below. And you can always feel free to like and subscribe to this video. And let's get going on our first painting. So the first painting I'm going to do is a little landscape here. So I'm going to start off with some nice sky colors. And I'm going to go ahead and add uh, a little bit of clouds to this as well. I'm not going very detailed on the clouds, but if you want to know how to make clouds, check out my tutorial on how I make clouds. Yeah, that's right. There's probably a link in the top right for this. Amazing. So I'm actually going to tape off the bottom half because I'm going to do a little bit of a reflection at the bottom when we're done, just to make it look like a nice little, nice little watery landscape. So for this one, I figure I'm going to do three different sets of mountains. The first one is going to be a little bit, uh, a little bit lighter. Well, it, it, I'm going to start with the background one, so I, I can't say that it's going to be a little bit lighter. It's going to be a lot lighter than the ones in the foreground. And because our sky is blue, it's going to blend with that a little bit. So let's go somewhat like, how about like right here? Let's grab this color and go somewhat like this. So not only lighter, but less saturated as well. Now, I didn't dry this background. I probably should have because this purple is kind of mixing with that. Oh well, what are you going to do? Now I'm going to take a little bit of purple and white to make kind of a, a new color here because another important aspect here with objects that are more in the background is they're going to have not only less saturation, but less contrast as well. And less detail. And there we go. So don't make the mistake of accidentally blending colors. Let's dry that a little bit and we'll move on to our next color. So for the next color, you see that we're starting right here, right? And this is, uh, you know, uh, going to be a little bit more towards the center of this hexagonal shape. Uh, towards the center is going to be the less saturated. Towards the outside is going to be where you're getting your more saturated uh, hues. So we're going to go a little bit further out and I'm going to go a little bit greener here. Let's go right, let's see, is that a little bit further? That's about the same distance. Let's go right here, that'll be a little bit more saturated. And we started right here for our brightness, so I'm gonna go right there. Let's just add two more hills here. Now, I'm not gonna snow cap on these ones here because they are a little bit greener, but I am gonna grab this branch here and add a little bit of, of texture to them here. And we'll blend that in just a little bit here, just to make it look like there's a, a you know a little bit more, a little bit more going on. That's what we want. It's kind of hard to get all the way to the edges with this, so I'm gonna take my brush, my uh, a dry brush, while this paint is still wet, and just go over it a little bit here. This will blend in some of the textures a little bit here, while we still hopefully maintain enough texture to make it look a little different. Again, we're not really going for a lot of details in, uh, in this tutorial. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. And for our, our, our frontmost layer here, you notice that we're going around kind of this way. I'm going to continue that trend here and pick a color down here, which is nice and saturated here. We're going to go pretty dark with it. I'm going to add a little bit more texture to it here. I'm going to grab one darker green. I really like the texture that I get from uh, from a dry sponge. I'm just gonna dab that on here a little bit. And maybe because this one's a little bit closer, we can add a little bit of texture that might look like some trees in here as well. I'm just gonna take this off, and see if I can quickly make a reflection on this. And voila, our first example of atmospheric perspective. 
For our second example, I'm gonna try something. I don't know, I got an idea in my head. I don't know how well it's gonna work, but I'm gonna try it. So we're gonna go with something nighttime. And I'm gonna grab some black spray paint to use a little bit later here. But what we're gonna to try to do here is a road in the middle with lines of trees on the side. And you'll see how in the background, the trees are gonna be less saturated and darker, which is what we're using the spray paint for. I'm not gonna to get too crazy here with a road. I'm gonna go with this color gray on the top of this and go maybe with this color gray in the foreground. And you know what, before I get going on the uh, on the trees here, let's see if I can add, I don't know, some splatter for some stars. How scattered will this be? Yeah, that'll work. Now because it's nighttime and not daytime, the ones in the background are actually gonna be darker than the ones in the foreground. But we are still gonna have less saturation for the ones that are in the back. So the back most ones we'll start with first, we're gonna go very dark. For the next set, we'll go a little bit more saturated and a little bit lighter. Again, we'll go more saturated, just a smidge lighter. And finally, the most saturated here, and one step lighter. Now, I like doing trees with the uh, with this palette knife here. That's gonna take a long time though. So I'm gonna start it with this. I'm gonna grab the palette knife, do a bunch of swoops like so. Now, like we said before also, the ones that are more in the background are gonna have less detail to them but we do need a little bit of color variation. Luckily, I literally have all the colors that I need laid out here. So I'm gonna add a little bit of this lighter one. And because I don't want that to be too much, I'm gonna go back over it with the darker one again. Note that this is not the best way to do trees. This is just my quick way of doing trees here because I don't wanna lose focus of what the subject is, which is the atmospheric perspective, if you haven't been paying attention. So the reason I grabbed this black spray paint is I figure with each iteration that we're gonna do, I'm gonna do a light coat of black across it, which will cover these once. Once I do the next layer of trees, it'll cover this background one twice and the one in front of it once. And then once I do the third layer of trees, it'll cover this one three times, the next one two times, that one once, so on. I hope that makes sense. Just one quick layer over it, I think will look good. Now for the next layer of trees, I'm gonna start with the next color green here. And again, we'll do the same thing here. And because it's a little bit more in the foreground, I can get a little bit more liberties with using some of the dark here to add a little bit more contrast here to the tree and some additional textures. And then of course I can go one lighter. Then eventually smooth them all back out with our base color green again. There we go. Same as before, because it's more in the background here, we're gonna add a quick layer of black. Those ones in the background are practically gonna disappear by the end, but that's okay, because we're ready to add our next layer of trees. So now our third layer is gonna go one, two, three, using this green to start with. We'll go back to the palette knife here to add our branches. some of this darker color. And you know what, because these ones are so light already, I'm not gonna go straight up with that color. I'm gonna mix it a little bit with the existing green here. Not bad for our third layer. Now this time, I don't think I'm gonna spray paint all the way across. I'm just gonna give just these trees here the old spray paint treatment and move on to our last layer. The last layer is going to be very simple because, well, frankly, I didn't space these enough, so it's pretty much just going to be covering up the whole outer edge. Which, now that I think about it, actually works out better because it would be kind of awkward if uh, you know, this last layer of trees just ended and there was just no more trees. So I think this works good. Now I know exactly what Bob Ross means when he says happy accidents. I'll mix in some of this next darker green. I'm 
And because these ones are a little bit more in the foreground, I'm gonna take one darker color. This is, I haven't done this on any of the other trees, but I'm gonna take one darker and add a little bit of this here with a smaller palette knife, just to add some extra detail that the other ones didn't have, because again, things more in the foreground are gonna have more detail than those in the background. Mind you, it's not much detail because, well, because I'm lazy, <laughs> but it's some, some detail it didn't have. Eh, why not grab this for some added texture, huh? Just a little bit, no one will know. Then for a consistent spray paint texture, I'm just gonna feather the outsides of these, give it a little vignette so it matches the rest of our trees. There we go. Another example of atmospheric perspective using trees. I think it'll look better in the gallery. I, at least I hope so. We'll see how it turns out. But the last example that we're gonna do in today's video of atmospheric perspective, I'm basically gonna replicate what I did in the Animal Crossing and the Last of Us crossover video that I did. If you haven't seen the video, it's pretty amazing. But basically what I did for the buildings, uh, really, I, I even impressed myself when I did it. So I'm gonna kind of replicate that. I'm not gonna do the details on the buildings. It's gonna be kind of the same sort of uh, layout that we did for the forest, but obviously, you know, pretend it's much bigger because, you know, it's supposed to be buildings, not trees. But yes, hopefully you'll see what we mean here. So I'm gonna start off with uh, a, couple, a couple different colors here for the background. Turned out pretty good. And then I'm basically just gonna tape off a number of buildings here. Again, we're gonna go with the same rule that what's in the background absorbs more of the atmosphere here. So in this case, it's gonna be lighter and it's gonna be less saturated. But because there's gonna be two sides of the building, I'm gonna go with two different colors here for each. Starting with the lighter color here. What's on the inside is technically going to be the lightest most part. And again, I'm not adding details to these buildings. I'm sorry, I'm just not. And then let's tape off that part so we can do the part closest to us. I'm gonna grab the one that's darker this time and infill this. Dry it off, let's take our tape off. Not too bad. Now you might be like, that's such a skinny building cast. Well, it's because I'm going to put one in front of it. I felt I didn't need to paint all the way over here because there's going to be a building in front of it. So let's go ahead and do that building now, huh? So now looking at these colors, we want to go a little bit more saturated here. So let's hop on over to how about this right here. We're going to go a little bit darker as well. So we'll start with this and one darker. We'll start with our light color here on the inside first. Tape it off nicely. And go with the darker color. And go for this last building. We're gonna go with the most saturated here. And definitely the darker the darkest, excuse me, the darkest colors of the group. Darker, darkest, you know what I mean. Now the secret sauce for this one, and what really worked on that Last of Us painting so well, is going to be what I did with spray paint. Ah, uh, yes. So what I did that worked out so wonderfully is took some white spray paint here. And maybe I should have thought of this. I don't know. I kind of wanted I kind of wanted to keep the reveal of this uh, of this tactic here <laughs> or of this technique till the end. But it would have been smarter if I did this as I was going. But basically the innermost part of each building got a little bit of that glow from the background, which greatly helped add depth and perspective to the buildings. So, like I said, ideally I would be doing this as I go. But here, I want to add just a little feather all the way down the building here, getting a little bit further away as I move down towards the bottom here. So just a little feather on the building. And then we'll add it to the next one. And then for the inner part, I don't actually need to tape it off because my background's already white. 
So I'm going to feather this as much as I can into the background here. And I almost just want to lose the edge of that building into the glow of this. I say building, let's just call it a rectangle. And there we go, not too bad. Now if you really want to be slick, you could add a shadow here behind, say, like this uh, the orangish red building into the brown one. I could add a shadow on the brown one here behind the, uh, the orange red one, but I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm just going to grab my paintbrush and sign the bottom. And there we go, a little tutorial in such art on atmospheric perspective. Do me a favor, let me know down in the comments if this video did help you. I want to make sure that we're, uh, you know, all expanding our artistic talents in some way with this tutorial series. I, At least I hope so. So uh, do me a favor and also leave the video a thumbs up if you did make it this far and you enjoyed it here. And do consider subscribing to the channel. If you got a uh, suggestion for a painting or for a tutorial, go ahead and leave it down in the comments below. I greatly appreciate it. And you can always join our Discord and let us know there. Link is in the description description. So I'm going to call it right here. Hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you so much for sticking it out. Kaz out. Peace.